welcome back. It's episode three of Dear Moby with Cat and Shy. I'm Cat. I'm Shy. And uh, here we are, episode three. Shy is a senior DevRel at Docker. And Cat is our head of social media. Yeah, good to see you, Shy. You showed up in an orange shirt, just like I asked. I, I did show up. The calendar invite uh, has gotten more specific for, for those of you in the audience that can't see the calendar invites that Kat sends me. Uh, rather than telling me we are recording, she always just sends me an invite saying, show up in a nice shirt. This time she sent me an invite that said, show up in a nice shirt that is the color of the summer. Uh, and so I had to go figure out what the color of the summer was. Uh, Kat, do you want to explain what this is and why it's important? I, I sure would. Uh, first of all, if you're new to Dear Moby with Cat and Shy, this is our show. It's kind of like a Dear Abby for developers. It's just yeah. the video version. We have a column as well. And uh, yeah, the color of the summer is neon orange. So I think Shy did a pretty good job. I, I came in hot with my orange manicure for all <laughs> those out there painting their nails, you know. Uh, so yeah, Shy, you fit in great. You look, <laughs> you look fantastic, ready for the summer. <laughs> <laughs> well, now that now that we've we've uh, dropped some knowledge about yeah. fashion, should we drop some knowledge about technology? Yes, it's your time to shine now, Shy. Are <laughs> you ready for the question of the week? I am ready for the question of the week. All right. This week's question comes from none other than Sham. Did you pick this question because it's the same name as me, minus two letters? I did. I know how you like okay. to have a bond with, with the folks that ask us questions, and <laughs> Sham just really, he jumped out. Uh, All right. So, uh, well, let's yeah. hear it. All right. So I'm going to pivot over here to the chagrin of producer Luke, but uh, his Sham's question is, which OS would you recommend for containerization? He mm -hmm. lists a few examples, Core OS, Rancher OS, Amazon Linux 2, Ubuntu, or any other. Yeah. Uh, and they don't give any specific use cases about what they're going to do with them? No use cases, just a general question. Currently, Sham is thinking about Rancher OS right now. Cool. Yeah, so I'm going to pull up my screen, and we can see that I am hanging out here in everyone's favorite website, Docker Hub. Um, and we've got a bunch of different images in here, including some that Sham mentioned. I think uh, they mentioned Ubuntu. Um, and I think it really depends on what you're doing. So if you're just tinkering around, um, you know, you can you can pick whatever operating system you're used to. You know, whether it's Ubuntu or Fedora or Alpine, and I think that's fine. Um, I think when you start to actually build things and you start to deploy those things, there's a couple different questions you need to start to ask. So making sure that your images are secure is really important. Making sure that your images are small is really important. Um, and I think picking good base images can really help with that process. So I want to take a moment to call out our Docker Verified P uh, Publishers Program, or DVP as we call it, uh, Docker Official Images and Open Source. And you can see some of these have these little flags on top of them. And so those are images that we've taken a look at the organization that has built it or were involved with in some way. Uh, and they kind of have our stamp of approval as being like, you know, this Ubuntu image is from the people who are involved in Ubuntu. Uh, so that's great. Uh, the next thing I want to mention is, you know, sometimes you're using specific languages and you know what there are. Uh, there are generally uh, container base images for each of the languages. So here we've got the official node image. Um, and you can see that they've got a bunch of different versions here. So if you need to make sure that you're running a specific version of Node, uh, if you're using an Ubuntu image, you're probably gonna use installing Node as part of your, your build file or your Docker file. Whereas here, you're just gonna get Node pre-installed. Uh, you can select it down to whatever version you wanna use. If you need to use 16.15.1 for some reason, you can lock it there. Uh, and then there are different versions of those same images. So if you wanna use uh, a slim version, which is typically going to be a much smaller version of the image. It's going to come with much less packages uh, than the bigger version. You can you can do that too, and kind of make sure that you're you're using the one that is right for your situation. Uh, and you can also you know use a scratch, an image from scratch. You you don't necessarily have to use any images. You can start it start it on your own, or you could just use the smallest image that that we have, which is like Alpine. Alpine is a five megabyte uh, image. That's that's you know, a full Linux distro, uh, because it's only five minutes, it doesn't have a lot of stuff that comes along with it. And, you know, that might be great if you're trying to keep things really small. You want, might want to make sure you're only adding the smallest stuff possible. And so my, my question to you is to sit down and figure out what are the requirements that you have? What are the things that you need to, to 
keep as you're picking your your image and, and go out there and find the one that, that fits all of your needs. And if the one that fits all your needs isn't out there, you should make it and you should uh, push it up to Docker Hub. Sweet. Thanks, Shai. I'm really glad that you mentioned our official images and the DVP program because yeah. as it should be, security is a big topic out there. I do see a lot yeah. of conversation about it on Slack, or excuse me, not only on Slack, but on social as well. So yeah. I'm really glad that you hit that, uh, which cool. brings me to my favorite segment. You want to do it? I, you want to take, take us through? The extension of the week. Perfect. Well done. All right. So I'm going to do two extensions this week. So I'm going to first out, first off, call off JFrog X-Ray and Sneak, uh, the Sneak extensions. These are both really fun extensions that let you take a look at your image and find some vulnerabilities in them. So if we click here and, you know, we pick an image, we can grab one of the ones on my system and we can hit scan. I went ahead and pre-ran this before the video started because it does take a little bit. Um, and, you know, we can find out that there are all of these issues with the image. So it looks like in this scenario, because it's just a base image, this is going to be stuff that is part of the original Debian instance. You can see it, it comes in from the, from the base layer. Um, and so you would need to reach out to those folks maintaining the the Debian instance to get that resolved uh, and clear this clear this uh, vulnerability. Uh, this was really useful back in the log4j period, back in January. You know, we were able to uh, see um, which images had it, and it's still up on Docker Hub. You know, what images have uh, log4j issues uh, as well? You can see that it's you know it's scanning. Um, and this vulnerability section here right on Docker Hub is actually powered by Sneak. And so, um, you know, we can click into the Sneak extension and we can see that, you know, it's a similar, it's a similar uh, kind of uh, interface. You click the image, you test it, uh, and then, uh, you know, you can see the vulnerabilities. And I'm going to show it in Docker Hub since it does take a little bit to, to run. And you can see, you know, this thing that I built um, has a bunch of really severe issues and we can click into them and we can find out more information. Uh, as well, which can be really useful. So those are my two extensions of the week are JFrog and Sneak. And we have some more security extensions that you can learn about over in the Docker the Docker extension marketplace. So make sure to check, take a look at that and figure out which one is the best for you. Sweet. That was great. I, I come from a security background, Shy. So I always yeah. love to learn more about security. Yeah, yeah. Way back in my IBM days. So <laughs> that, it's always fun to hear. Well, I uh, didn't know that. But one thing oh, I did know yeah. about you uh, is what it said in your fun lower third fact, and that's you are a recovering only child. Yes, yes. I, I am a recovering only child. Uh, so all three to five of you out there watching the show, <laughs> like give me some support. Throw me a like. Throw us a like. Uh, throw a comment in there, you know, it's uh, it's hard being the only kid your parents have, you know. Um, I think producer Luke might be showing some photos, embarrassing photos of me with some dolls and like I had an obsession. Oh, no. <laughs> me, I just had an obsession with like being like honorary siblings with people. If someone said I was their honorary sibling, I just, my yeah. day was made. So it's hard out there. It's hard out there. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, I'm there for all the only children. Yes. Um, oh. Which brings us to your fun fact that that's a happier one that takes us to a lighter place. Uh, I I saw that your fun fact is that you are an aspiring professional gnocchi maker. <laughs> I don't creator. know where the professional the professional came from, but I did make gnocchi I this think weekend. We know. I I, I did, uh, uh, I do dinner parties every other week and, and yeah, I was at the farmer's market trying to figure out what to cook and I saw some asparagus and, and, uh, and some potatoes and I decided, you know what, this could be fun. Let me, let me do a uh, gnocchi in a cream sauce with some fresh asparagus. And it was very, it was very summery. And so, so yeah, I made gnocchi for all of my friends. Um, and that was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed it. So. And it didn't, it wasn't like your first lower third, like with the caramel burning. <laughs> I take it. No, I did not burn myself while making this one. Perfect. But That's I did where the professional collapse into comes a food coma afterwards. So, <laughs> well, I, I wish you had sent me some across the country. That would have been <laughs> the nice thing to do, shy. But it's okay. I'll get over it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, that I think is it for us this week. Cat, how do people let us know about their questions? 
So glad you asked. So if you have a question that you would like us to answer on the show, you can pop it right down in the comments of this video, or there is a link in the description that will take you to our Dear Moby submission page mm -hmm. where your question might be answered in the blog form of this or on the YouTube show. You never know. So if your question is chosen, you will be getting some swag. So don't hesitate to ask. We love to get your questions. Awesome. Well, that's it from us this week, Kat. I am looking forward yeah. to your next weird calendar invite, and I will yeah. see you see you soon. Likewise. Great shirt today, Shy. See you next time. <laughs> Bye, everyone. Bye. really hard to dance with how little room there is here. You know what? It's just another mountain to climb. You're fine. <laughs>